In my time of tutoring, I have observed that students are very uncomfortable with the idea of sigma notation. So in this video, I'm going to show you using a couple of examples exactly how sigma notation works, what it means and how to use it. So you'll typically see a sigma notation that looks like this. Now, what does this mean? So what it is, is the following. Okay, so to find term one, you start by plugging in this number in the place of k. Now that number isn't always going to be a 1, but in this case it is. So we're going to say 3 times 1 plus 2, which is 5. To find term 2, you just add another number to that one, which in this case is just going to be a 2. And then you say 3 times 2 plus 2, and that's going to give us 8. And then for term 3, you are going to plug in a 3 over there, and that's going to give you 11. When would you stop? You would stop when your k number gets to this part over here. Then what you, okay, so you'd go all the way down to term, I think in this case it would probably take us to term 12, which would be 3 times 12 plus 2, which would then be 38. You would then take all of these numbers that you had calculated, whatever they are, and you would add them all together to give you the sum. So that is what sigma means. It means sum. Okay, but we know how to do this. We know how to take the sum because look what type of pattern we have formed. It goes 5, 8, 11. That is an arithmetic pattern. So we could use the sum formula for an arithmetic pattern, which goes like this, where n would be your number of terms, which in this case is going to be 12. But, and this annoys me because teachers don't mention this to students. It's not because that number is a 12. It's due to the following. The formula, the way to work out the number of terms is to take that top number, then you minus this bottom number, which is a 1, and then you should add 1, which in this case is 12. But what if I gave you a sigma notation where this was a 12 at the top, but k started at 2 instead? Then you would say 12 minus 2, plus 1, which is only 11, and so there would only be 11 terms. So it's not always going to be the number at the top, okay? It is going to be the number at the top when the number at the bottom is a 1. So in this case, there are 12 terms. Then A is always term number 1, which in this case we found it as 5. So that's going to be 2 times 5 plus N is 12 minus 1, and the common difference is 3. We can see that you have to add 3 each time. So that'll just be times by 3, and then we can close the bracket, type everything in on the calculator, and your total answer would be 258. So I always love giving students a question. I'll often go to the whiteboard, and I'll just write this on the board, and I'll tell them to do the question. And many of them will say, well, what's the question? <laughs> and so remember that this whole notation it means calculate the sum of. So the answer is 258. So when they give you that type of thing, they're not going to say in the test, calculate the sum. They're just going to give you that. And what it means is you have to calculate the sum. That's what that funny symbol means. It means what is the sum of. All right, let's try another example. So if we had to try this one over here, so if we had to try this one over here, don't be too quick to use the sum formula for an arithmetic. Your job is always to determine whether it is an arithmetic or a geometric. So here they're telling us, or well, here's the question, and so to find term 1, you just plug in whatever this number is, and so that's going to be 3 minus 4, which is minus 1. To find term 2, then you have to plug in the new value for k, which goes up by 1, so that's going to be 4 minus 4 now, and that's 0. Then to find term 3, k now becomes 5, so it's 5 minus 4, which is 1. After you have found the first three terms, you are then able to work out if it is geometric or arithmetic. Why three terms, Kevin? Good question. If you only found two, um, two terms, so let's say term 1 was equal to 2 and term 2 was equal to 4. Well, you might say that it's arithmetic because you have to add 2 each time or you could also say it's geometric because you can also multiply by 2. So by finding three terms, you can get a better idea of what the patterns actually. Because if term three was now equal to six, well now we can see that you're adding two each time and not multiplying by two each time. So for this one, we can see that it's arithmetic. We're adding one each time. So we can use the sum formula for an arithmetic sequence. And so we're going to find the sum. 
and that's going to be equal to, well, we need to know the number of terms. Now, don't say that it's 10. I've seen this happen a lot. The f remember, it's not, it's not always going to be that number. It's that number minus the bottom number, which is a 3, and then you must add 1. So it's 10 minus 3, which is 7. Add 1, and that gives you 8. So there are actually only 8 terms in this pattern. So that's going to be 2 times, a is, a is term 1, so that's minus 1, plus your number of terms is 8 minus 1, and the difference between each number is 1. Throw everything in on the calculator, and what you'll get is your, your answer will be 20. So if you had to add all of those numbers all the way up to the 8th term, you would get a total answer of 20. Now remember, this could also work for a geometric pattern, but the, the idea stays the same. All that you do is you go full the you go full in term one, term two, term three, and then you see what type of pattern is formed, and then you just use the arithmetic formula or the geometric formula.